to Guitar Technique, episode three, phrasing and slurring. Well, performing lead and melody guitar on its own will require the guitarist to develop some fairly decent control over how phrasing could be added to the guitar lines. And the single note line ideas that we use and combine into phrases will often have combinations of various scales and arpeggios. And you know, one style in where this is widely applied across all those ideas uh, for playing the harmonies is jazz. Now, mainly because you know, covering jazz harmony, it, it, it tends to use a lot of directions in the key changes that happen and just really bringing about the wider harmonic range that happens in jazz can make for some very cool lines, you know, some very uh, interesting ideas that will require the jazz player to have a little more nimble use of their fingerings on the neck. Now, in this lesson, we're going to study playing lines in the jazz style. Our focus is going to be on how to add slurring in the style so that the lines will sound smoother and more connected. Plus in formatting this around jazz, we're going to also have the opportunity to experiment and explore uh, more unique fingering ideas that are common to this style of playing. So let's get things started here in part one of the lesson. In exercise one, we're going to take this melodic statement here, and you heard me just now play it straight. And this is how it's laid out in example 1A. And what we're going to be doing here is looking at adding legato techniques. And that's really what slurring is all about, you know, hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides. And when they're included into a guitar melody line, we get a little bit more smoothness and connectedness out of the phrasing. So the formatting that we're going to use here is taking this example 1A, idea that we just played for you. And then in example 1B, we're going to break it down a little bit differently by adding in some slurred ideas. Now, in the first section here, what's happening is, in measure one, I should really say, what's happening is we're using the second string, third string, and fourth string, and we're just working through some notes. Just like so. can tell here I'm going through 8th fret, 9th fret, 8th fret, and 6th fret on the 2nd string. And then I'm moving over to the 3rd string. I have 8, 7, and 5. So we're working from this E flat to D to C. And then we just grab this B flat down here. So as you can tell with the notes that we have, it's basically a C minor scale. And we're working through the first chunk of it here. Then what happens next is we're going to add a little bit of harmonic minor, the major 7. I'm going to add it in over here. It's a B natural off the 4th fret of the 3rd string. And I'm going to go over to an A flat and a G next. And move from the B natural up to this 7th fret D. And then I'm going to resolve here from an F to an E tone. But the E tone is going to be natural. So it's going to color it up a little bit differently, almost like we had a change from a C minor to a C major, or maybe a C minor chord moving up to an A minor 7. So, you know, there's some choices to make, you know, harmonically of what can happen with this line, but I do have some alterations that are happening to it, because remember our formatting, after all, is jazz, so we're going to see some changes happening to lines, but basically that's the statement. Now, what we're going to do with that statement is embellish it a little bit. And we're going to have a slide to start things off. If you want, just look at the handout under exercise number 1B. What I'm doing there is I'm sliding forward and back off the 8th and 9th frets with a pull-off that goes over to that F tone at the 6th fret of 2nd string. Then I'm going to the 8th fret of 3rd string, sliding downward into 7th fret with a pull-off into the 5th fret. Then I'm getting this 8th fret tone off the 4th string, coming around up on the 3rd string to the B natural. And then for the uh, tones of A flat and G, I'm just going to be doing a pull off and then a hammer on. And then upwards here, back to the B natural and the D tone, 4th fret to 7th fret of 3rd string, I'm doing a hammer on. And then to wrap things up, to take us into that other color tone, the shift over to the E natural, I'm just going to do a pull off off the 6th fret, F. 
into the fifth fret E natural. So all together, nice and slow. Again. So here's some basic phrasing practice that you can learn to add in with some legato technique, some slurring technique, and uh, you know some interesting color tones that are going on there. You can make some decisions of you know what you would think of in terms of different chording. You know maybe a C minor chord into something like a uh, A major with B in the bass. You know something like that. B dominant eleventh. So you can come up with your harmony for the backing of that, but uh, I'm just giving you really the focus on the melodic side and help your technique, you know, come around to adding different kinds of slurring ideas around that uh, mainly C minor melody line concept. So we're going to take a short break now and then come back in a moment in exercise two where I've got some interesting 16th note phrasing that we're going to check out next. Hi everybody, Andrew Wasson here from creativeguitarstudio.com. I've been a professional guitarist for over 25 years now and I've been teaching guitar for even longer than that. But today I want to talk to you about your current situation by discussing the study of guitar and the time that you have available to put into it. If you're like most people, you're working a nine to five job and you're working eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, that's 160 hours a month. How much free time does that leave you left over to study guitar? Uh, let's say you can maybe fit in an hour or so, a, around four or five days in a week when you have the free time. And if that is the case, wouldn't you wanna make the most of that one hour of study? Practicing a highly organized, step-by-step, well-structured guitar curriculum. Without a structured plan, it's pretty easy to waste time. You know, a lot of times it happens by just focusing on playing through a bunch of stuff you know, you know, songs you know, riffs you already know, licks that you're familiar with. But practicing stuff you already know will not make you a better guitar player. You need a constant supply of fresh material. You know, if you practice guitar by just playing stuff you already know, before you realize it, time ticks on, time ticks by, and that valuable period of time that you have every day, it gets lost. If left alone, those hours lost every day turn into lost weeks, lost months, and then eventually lost years of wasted time. You'll still be the same guitar player that you were before because you never challenged yourself. I've seen it dozens and dozens of times in my own studio here, but you know, you can change that. In the valuable time that you do have every day, you can start studying a comprehensive guitar course that'll not only educate you, but it'll turn you into a well-skilled musician. So if you want to learn more, sign up for a free account through my website at creativeguitarstudio.com. The general access membership is absolutely free to join. Come in, get your feet wet, and when you're ready, you can go for the paid membership. What you'll discover in there is the most comprehensive guitar curriculum available online. Well, in exercise two, it's a little bit different concept going on here because we've got 16th notes, first of all, and also, you know, the slurring technique that we're going to move into is going to require us to change strings with, with one of the notes here. I mean, it's just the idea being that when you do this type of work, a lot of times, you know, if you're doing a slide or something, you're going to need that other note on the same string. And the same thing goes for, you know, hammer-ons or pull-offs as well. So first of all, what I want to just broach the topic of all this with is that, you know, once you can get your phrasing and slurring together with eighth note melody, the next step is to go into faster 16th note lines. And this approach here that we have in exercise two is, you know, in the same way, you know, in the, the exercise was before in exercise one, except now we're going to be dealing with a couple of different phrasing concepts uh, that we need to explore. So let's get started here by just getting you acquainted with this first line. And uh, this is in example 2A in your handout. And what's happening is we're starting on the fourth string and we're playing fifth fret to sixth fret. And then we're jumping over to the second string and playing eighth fret over to fifth fret, that E. So some string skipping going on there. Then we're going to roll over here with sixth fret to sixth fret, second string to first. And then jump over to third string, have eighth fret going over to the fifth fret. So all together in the first measure, we get this. 
Then we're going to jump forward. We're going to grab a high tenth fret note here on the second string, and then we're going to move to the se third string and have seventh and eighth frets there over to the ninth fret of second string. And then we're going to wrap things up with the top two strings going eight, nine, eight, seven. Alright, so all together we get this. Alright, so that's example 2A. And then in example 2B, what we're going to do is start phrasing this a little bit differently, adding some slides and pull-offs and hammer-ons, stuff like that. So what's happening, first of all, is we're going to do a slide from the 5th fret to the 6th fret on the 4th string there, what we started with. But if you recall before, we were in position, going like this, 1st finger to 2nd finger. But with a slide, we're going to actually use middle finger, and we're going to slide forward into that 6th uh, fret of 4th string. Then we're going to jump over to the 2nd guitar string, have a pull-off there, 8th fret to 5th fret. And then what we're going to do is take these two 6th fret notes on the 2nd and 1st strings, play them with 1st finger, and then we're going, going to go to the 3rd string and slide 8th fret to 9th, just like so. Now, if you'll recall, we were doing that a bit differently before because we were using the 3rd string at the 8th fret over to the 2nd string, 5th fret, to get that E natural. But now we're sliding forward, so we're going to do it on the same string, and we're just going to have that unison note, that E tone. One of them, of course, is located on the 9th fret of 3rd string, and the other unison E is located on the 5th fret of 2nd string. So we're just taking advantage of the unison process of the guitar, and we're you know having that advantage for the slide that we want to get happening with. Now, in the second measure of the phrasing side, in example 2B, uh, we have the high 10th fret, and then we're going to go, that's on 2nd string, and then we're going to go to the 3rd string, 7th fret to 8th fret, and then we're going to move forward and get the 9th fret of 2nd string. But you can tell how I'm doing that 7th and 8th frets, I'm hammering on. And then after that, I'm going to do a slide from the 8th fret to 9th fret on 2nd string. You can tell I'm using my middle finger there, and dropping down from the 8th to the 7th on the 1st string. So the whole measure... So we're getting some good slide action happening here, and uh, we have a, you know, a hammer-on concept in the previous measure we had a pull-off. And when you put it all together, we get this. So, you know, really what a big part here of example two is, is we're trying to understand how can we change fingerings, how can we map something out differently to be able to take advantage of different phrasing, different slurring techniques. And as you could tell with this exercise, you know, fingerings had to change sometimes. And also, you know, we even had to move a note around, you know, that E tone, we took it from the fifth fret of the second string, and we were placing it over here on the third guitar string at the ninth fret. So, you know, this kind of work is really abundant when you're doing this kind of uh, technical approach on the guitar. You have to start rethinking a lot, you know, determining how, you know, things are going to get planned out. That's why it's so valuable to know your guitar neck. Uh, without that knowledge behind you, um, it's gonna, you're going to have a lot of roadblocks along the guitar fingerboard of how to understand it to take the lines that you want to build and play into different directions. So, you know, keep that in mind because the better you get at your neck, and the better you know your notes on the neck and your scales and your arpeggios and you know chord voicings, all that stuff makes a big impact for you know how you're able to control what you're doing. So anyway, this uh, now wraps up uh, part one of the lesson. And we're going to move forward and next uh, to part two. That, of course, will be in the members area of the website at creativeguitarstudio.com. So if you don't have a membership yet, this is the time of these videos. I usually try to start plugging my website, getting you guys to go over to the site, at least pull the free membership, study all those quick licks lessons. I got 30 free lessons on the site. They all come with a complete video, and uh, we have uh, handouts that go along with that. And you know, they're really interesting guitar lick ideas you can work on. And then when you feel ready, you can look at getting either a basic monthly membership or you could go for the full premium package, which is a one-year membership plan, and it gives you access to absolutely everything on the site. And really, the core curriculum is the big thing on my website, which is, of course, the introductory, intermediate, and the advanced guitar program. There's just so much information that's done in a very step-by-step -step processed kind of way, very chapter-by-chapter -chapter learning. Uh, it took a lot of years to build this course and this course 
course is huge. There's literally hundreds and hundreds of uh, pages of material. Most of the, the even single lesson plans of the advanced program are generally around two and a half hours long worth of video just per lesson plan. Right, right now, if you go to the site, you can start working through the introductory program into the intermediate. Intermediate is really going to help get you organized on your guitar neck. We're going to go through all the neck patterns of the octaves and talk about all the unison processes and so forth that happen on the neck. We'll go through all the triad chords that are on the fingerboard. We'll go through majors and minors and fingering patterns that probably you've never seen before. Uh, then in the advanced guitar program, we take things a lot further. We really start breaking down the scales, arpeggios, and uh, pentatonics. There's all kinds of information there on chord types. You know, there's lots of chord voicings and ways of playing different chord patterns on the neck for the major seven, minor seven, and dominant seventh shapes. There's some extensions in there when you first get started in advance. There's, there's so much stuff. And if you really want to study a guitar program that's logical and follows a very step-by-step -step process, uh, check out the site. It's at creativeguitarstudio.com. I look forward to seeing you there for uh, not just all that other great information, but of course also for part two of this lesson plan. The Blues Guitar Styles eBook is a masterclass course covering a huge amount of information on the blues style. With 8, 12, and 16 bar blues progressions, classic blues styles, plus all the important chord patterns. There's over 50 pages of information including sections on blues techniques like slide, alternate tuning, and bending. This ebook has everything the guitar player needs for a solid foundation in blues guitar including 27 mp3 audio tracks for easy at home study. Blues Guitar Styles is available for instant download in the View Our Products area at creativeguitarstudio.com. Thanks for watching part one of the lesson. Be sure to sign up for a membership at creativeguitarstudio.com to watch part two. In part two, we'll practice technique for slurring in the swing feel and technique for altering the phrasing lines. Plus, as a member, you'll also be able to download the handout for this lesson along with many more professional guitar lessons. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch up next in the members area.